an AI revolution right now. It's quite a buzzword. Uh, one thing that's important, though, is just e even said at the Gartner IT Symposium a few weeks ago, if you're not adopting AI, you're going to be left behind. So around 94% of executives say that AI is critical to their company's success. 50% of CIOs say they will adopt AI technologies by next year. And 70% of CIOs say the biggest AI responsibility they have is AI security. So AI for the business, for the enterprise, but for the CIO and for the IT and OT organization is, is clearly becoming something that is an, an imminent reality. And as I said, we're in an AI revolution, but what does AI do? Well, it enables workplace optimization, right? And who better to understand the use of AI than industrial security professionals, right? What we protect, industrial control systems, automation, these are devices that automate physical processes, right? AI is just a form of automation. It's an automation of cognitive processes and analysis. So AI enables the workplace optimization in the forms of productivity gains, right? Quicker times for results when mining intelligence from data sets and increases our ability to collaborate cross domain and share information. And it offers time and resource efficiency gains back to end users, no matter where it's applied. So dark trace AI, what is it? Well, we call it self-learning AI, and it's a combination of methods. We now use a wide range of our own self-learning methodologies to understand new information and overcome new challenges in cyberspace. We use real-time Bayesian probabilistic methods to allow models to be effectively updated and controlled in real time. We use deep neural networks to replicate the thought process of humans and analysts. We use graph theory to understand incredibly complex relationships between people, systems, organizations, and supply chains. We use offensive AI techniques such as GANs to help test and improve our ability to counter AI-driven attacks. We use generative AI and applied AI to run simulated phishing campaigns, tabletop exercises, and realistic incident response drills. We also use natural language processing and large, lang large language models, which can interpret and produce human consumable outputs. So we use each part of this AI arsenal where it best addresses a cyber challenge. For example, we've seen over the years really how important it is for AI systems to explain themselves to the end users. It's not enough to just build the best product in the world. You need humans to use it, to understand it, and to trust it, especially in an industrial environment where the stakes are high, multiple personas with different roles and responsibilities are involved, and levels of knowledge are involved. Having AI that is able to explain its reasoning in these environments is mission critical. So when we need to do that, we draw on our AI language models, the natural language processing and the ability of generative AI to provide the reasoning and explanations or to summarize the outcomes for rapid consumption or provide translation to your own native language. This is what allows our tool that functions in an operational technology environment to be usable by an IT professional uh, who doesn't have the ICS specific security background. So to understand potential attack paths from a remote supply chain in your most critical assets or an attack path modeling, we use other things like graph theory that are best for that job. But what we like to say is that no matter the cyber challenge, we have an AI that is applicable to help end users. Now, when we look at that across the areas or the domains of coverage, uh, when we use dark trace self-learning AI, we're using our, our customer data in real time. And that lies at the heart of everything we do. And this is where a real difference and advantage is, especially in the industrial environments. We don't periodically you know, hover up all your data and, and grab it all and then put it in a lab environment and, and, and do testing on it. No, instead, we're taking real-time data from your environment, right? And we use that to formulate the algorithms to detect things that are going to be unusual to your environment. Inside every single customer lies a dark trace AI that is completely unique to them. It's their own AI data pipeline. So plug into their operations and self-learning in real time. It's completely automatically from the ground up being able to assess the environment and the connectivity. And this is across their email environments, their cloud systems, their laptops, across offices, external presences that are exposed to the internet and everyday applications used by employees. And that all ties into the core of the target for most industrial operations, which is going to be their manufacturing or production sites, where, of course, we're plugged in as well. But we see all of the data and inputs from all of the other, should we say, rings of the bullseye that might be surrounding the industrial operations. And we see how they all interconnect.
So our AI learns in place from each individual customer. It was not taught in some lab. What's important is that we're going to apply this, like I said, across all the domains. If we're going to be focused and become industrial centric in what we do with our AI, the, the core of what we're doing is going to be the anomaly based detection. So leveraging artificial intelligence to learn what's normal for an operation to then pick out the things that are abnormal. Well, what are the benefits of that and the anomaly-based detection? Well, when you use a statistical approach to threat detection in any environment, but especially within an industrial environment, you're going to be able to detect more threats from a network perspective. Things like an OT insider threat where there's no malware involved, right? But you're able to still pick it out because the actions of that insider clearly deviate from what's considered normal. As a data company and as an AI company, the more data and visibility we have within the environment and within the industrial environment, especially as we see outlined by our Purdue model here, the more context we have and the more we can detect at each layer. Now, of course, we suggest and we desire integration because again, we are a data company and we're a mathematics company. And the more data we get, the more analysis and mathematical analysis we can do within the constructs and confines of the networks that we are plugged into and have a better understanding. So when you see on this slide, our integrations are brought into play. An example of what's brought to the field when we have those integrations in an industrial environment is now we can detect things like the compromise of legitimate secure remote access channels. Thank you.